what defines a, a healthy microbiome? What are the characteristics of a microbiome that are healthy? And then when you say disruption or people talk about dysbiosis, what is actually changing in the, in within the microbiome or within the gut in general that that is perhaps leading to inflammation and perhaps uh, influencing some of these disease states? Yeah, fantastic. So the you know this question of what is a healthy microbiome is an incredibly difficult question, and it's it's actually the key question that the you know, all of these projects that started sequencing the microbiome that they sent out, set out to address, you know, uh, 10 to 15 years ago. And the, the thinking at that time, which was very reasonable was that if we sequence the microbiome of a bunch of healthy people, we should have a pretty good idea of what a healthy microbiome looks like. And as comparison, you know, sequence the microbiome of diseased cohorts, you know, people that are suffering from different diseases, and that should give us kind of this frame of reference of healthy versus diseased. What we've come to realize is that even healthy people, um, have an increased likelihood of developing a chronic inflammatory disease or developing heart disease or, you know, developing one of these kind of Western diseases, one of these non-communicable chronic diseases. And it um, leads to the question of whether um, the microbiome of a healthy person is not actually a healthy microbiome. It may actually be a microbiome that's predisposing them to these different diseases. And so then the question, becomes um, how what is the way to develop to develop an idea or a concept of, of a healthy microbiome or features that you might find in a healthy microbiome and so there are different approaches to this now so we don't still don't have an answer to your question but some thinking is if we go into populations that are pre-industrialized mm -hmm. and look at their microbiomes before they get exposed to antibiotics or um, you know have a, a bunch of perturbation to their microbiome we may get a sense of the mm -hmm. gut community that's better adapted to our biology. And so there's a, a large effort now to understand microbiome more globally in different mm -hmm. populations that live traditional lifestyles. Um, but I think that, you know, there, there definitely is within just an industrialized um, world uh, um, or within the industrialized world, a concept of what features in the microbiome partition with um, more severe disease states and those that are associated with healthy people. That doesn't mean that those features are a healthy microbiome, mm -hmm. but it does mean that they are in, you know, healthy. seen in many health. Is some of that work uh, in traditional non industrialized communities uh, being done with groups like the Hadza? Yeah, exactly. So we've done some work on the Hadza gut microbiota. So the Hadza. Um, or a group of uh, hunter gatherers that live in Tanzania and um, you know, or they are undergoing rapid lifestyle change. Now there's just a lot of um, factors impacting their lifestyle, um, but they do live a life lifestyle that is primarily based on, um, you know, hunting and gathering and their microbiome is much um, more diverse. It has more species. It has different species of bacteria present than industrialized populations. And what's really interesting is um, many of the bacterial species that we see in the Hadza, we also see in other hunter gatherers found in other parts of the world that you know have been um, separate from the Hadza for um, up to you know one hundred thousand years or more. So um, these are you know appear to be features of the microbiome that are more representative of what humans microbiome may have looked like throughout our evolutionary history. And therefore maybe what our human genome has come to expect and adapted to for a microbiome. So there may be some really interesting information in these traditional populations, microbiomes in terms of what is healthy. Mm -hmm. um, but, but there are also are higher incidents of um, parrot, you know, um, what we would consider intestinal parasites in many of these populations. So potentially some bacteria or other um, pathogens, parasites that can cause a disease and inflammation. So, um, you know, we, we have to be careful about what we conclude. We also have to be careful about, um, things like bio process, bio prospecting or biopiracy. Um, these traditional populations quite often leave, lead a very vulnerable existence. And, um, you know, all of the research is, um, needs to be carried out with a, a, a lot of consideration of these mm -hmm. populations.